we're screwed. Hey guys, today we're gonna find out whether army tanks can actually float and swim and propel themselves through the water. I was told we were going to the lake. Looks nothing like a boat. What am I supposed to do with my swimsuit and my life jacket? Now I know what you're thinking. You're gonna take a look at this and be like, that's not a tank, that's not a battle tank. And you're right, it's not. It looks like a tank though, and it's got tank tracks and tank suspension. This is actually what's called an amphibious personnel carrier. An M548. We got a film permit. That's the only reason I know that it's legal. The old legal team over here. You guys know this uh, if you watch the TV show, right? I bought this from a guy. We brought it to the shop, rebuilt the motor. It's supercharged and turbocharged. So this is like a, like a piece of history. Like it's just one of the coolest vehicles to ever exist because it's tracked. It's got similar uh, tracks to like, you know, what the battle tanks do. Um, it's got the 6V53 two-stroke Detroit diesel engine, uh, automatic transmission, and it floats, supposedly. So here's what happened. And this is, this is so cool, we get to show you guys this. Like I'm so freaking pumped because uh, I've had this for a while now and I've not really had many opportunities to use it, which is weird because I get to use like all my military stuff. This has been one of those vehicles where it's like, we haven't really found the exact right application for it. So what's happened is, I'm getting rid of it, which kills me. I never in a million years thought I was gonna actually get rid of it. But the reason I'm doing it is because I'm trading it for another military vehicle, which I'll, I'm not gonna blow the surprise yet. I'll tell you guys soon. So Joe at Midwest Military Equipment, um, I reached out to him, we were talking. He's like, hey, you know what? I want your M548. I'll trade you this other mystery vehicle that I'm gonna get. He's like, however, there is one contingency. He's like, I need you to verify the fact that the M548 actually does float and swim and is fully amphibious. Any opportunity I get to take a tank and put it in a lake and see if it floats, that's a done deal. Like, come on. So we're here at a beautiful East Canyon Resort here in uh, Utah, this is a state park. And today we are gonna take the M548 down the boat ramp and see what happens. Well guys, here goes nothing. I've got a water bottle. <laughs> I've got an army helmet for some reason. I've got some bait and tackle, which really don't have no zero idea where that came from. I've got someone's backpack. I got a drone. I got some starting fluid. I got some caulk. And I got a very ambitious start button. Shall we? shut the engines down here for a minute and just show to you that we are uh yeah we're a hundred percent floating right now and uh we've got some areas of concern like that guy right there also that guy over there also this guy here also this guy here also that guy there <laughs> hey how's it look back there awesome dry as a whistle okay so like not so wet, much up like here wet whistle. we're a little wetter up here as a whistle yeah yours whistle's wetter than mine from from like a whistle point of view <laughs> but the thing is my bilge pumps are on and you would see it coming out of that hose right there and it's not we are a solid 100 or 200 yards away from the boat ramp hands on a jet ski and uh Guys, 
floating. This is just a real moment. I just need to know how your anxiety is it's right now. Fine I'm not in that. This thing floats. That this floats just fine. Reverse. Watch me go reverse. Watch me go forward. There it goes. I have all yep. the amenities. Oops. I as well have <laughs> yeah, many but, amenities. Yeah, you will get there till next fall. I also have some uh, some small leaks. They're not big leaks. Like a, would a pencil fill them in? Or a, I would say that a, they're probably pencil. pencil. I'd say a handful of pencils, craft <laughs> pencils. Oh, the boys are in the water. The boys are swimming, guys. The, the boys are swimming. That was the synchronized diving. Hey, Dave, open your door and let me in. I don't think we should open any doors right now. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's freaking floating, guys. One thing that makes me super nervous, though, is all the water I'm seeing come in um, and none of it coming out, which means the bilge pumps are in the wrong spot. Pretty sure I just heard him say the screws are going right in my phone. Man, it smells heavy. Right. We were just in the water for how long was that? 20, 30 minutes? And uh, yeah, the bilge pumps are working. Is that side pumping? I don't think we have that much water on board. You're gonna have to do double bilge. I need you to do some science right now. <laughs> All right, guys. It is time for test number, I'm gonna call this test number three. Test number one was put it in the water and see what happens. Test number two was hit the water with some speed, which went really well. Uh, test number three actually is to see how uh, upset the fishermen are. Um, trying not to upset the guys here. That's, you know, family friendly uh, spot here. Hey guys, the, uh, the build pump is working overtime right now, but only one. So right before we do test number three, which is a full blown lake crossing with, with tubes and water toys hooked. Uh, guys, I'm not gonna lie. I was full throttle all the way into the water and uh, this girl was cooking. We were third gear pinned, which one thing that I don't know yet, which I probably should, is whether this has a high and a low range. I've heard that it does, and I've also heard that it doesn't. One thing we've noticed though, Hunter, and I think we probably saw this coming, but we didn't really think about it, the nose is low. Why? Because we got a giant engine and transmission up there. This engine weighs, what, 2,000 pounds probably? But this dude's actually really, really smart. So I actually feel very comfortable knowing that Hunter gave this thing a once over because this guy knows how to sink and he also knows how to swim. Uh, if you've watched his YouTube channel, which we'll plug right here, you should probably follow it because it's ridiculous. You'll see he knows how to sink, but also he's a smart enough guy that he knows how to swim. Those are a family of engineers, got a lot of brain power going on up there. Can Seven. I ask you a question? Yeah. You don't mind? Um, you see this thing on the boat ramp, what are your first thoughts? Why? <laughs> <laughs> you meant to say why not. Right? <laughs> No, why actually? <laughs> you know the military builds some pretty wild vehicles, right? Yeah. Why would we have one up here at East Canyon? Why would you? Yeah. Is that the million dollar question today? I don't know, when I saw you first put in, I thought it was just to scare all the fish away. 
<laughs> did we scare them away? I uh, probably. Did we catch any? No was, fish today? It was pretty noisy out yeah, there. Yeah, it's a little noisy. What I first thought when I saw that was I hope somebody's got a camera because this is going to be good. I got a camera. <laughs> And a drone. <laughs> the good news is we've got a lot of cameras. There you go. Yeah. <laughs> How often do you guys fish up here? Quite a bit? Yeah, quite a bit. Yeah. Here and there. Have you ever seen a tank go in the water here yet? Uh, no. First time. I was wondering if it was going to make it. <laughs> so <are> we. <laughs> so <are> we. <laughs> Hey, thanks for your comments. <laughs> <Yeah>. Appreciate it. <laughs> Do you think we could pull you on a tube to the other side of the lake? Because Ethan tells me that we have a permit that says we can pull up on any dirt anywhere in the lake, which is... I, I don't think it's real, but I'm going to believe him. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, that's not true, but <laughs> after seeing it float, does anybody have any doubts that it will make it to the other side of the lake, which is a solid, what do we call that? A thousand yards? When you have me and Hunter running the buckets, the bilge going, and if we get the other bilge running, we'll easily make it a whole loop around the lake. Okay. Who can build faster? You so I guess what we're going to do right now is probably just place like wagers. These are friendly wagers. Are we going to make it to the shortest point across the other side of the lake? Right now, we are on the phone with uh, Mr. Andrew Thoma. Uh, worked for Diesel Sellers for a long time. Um, he was on the TV show. He right now is our guy that knows the most about the two-stroke Detroits. And so we uh, put in a phone call and said, Andrew, what do you think we need to do as far as being able to get this thing across the lake? And Andrew, you think this might have a two-speed transfer case? Is that right? Oh. I thought it wasn't moving. I never did hear what the problem was. Yeah, I mean, based off of what we've seen, there's linkage, there's everything that says there's a two-speed transfer case, because right now I'm yeah. full speed in third gear, and it says I'm doing 10, 15 miles an hour, which we know is not right, because we know this tank does probably closer to, what, 25, 30 miles an hour? It should go 40. We're going at least 30, and at least that, maybe yeah. faster. Yeah. I would definitely check that lever on the... Uh, transmission transfer case area that we had problems with whenever we were working on it for the show and see if that's kicking out there. Hunter, what's going on right there? That disc I is... I turned your pumps off earlier. Does, but does that disc have a plug? Uh, like that, that was just picking water up from the bottom of the bilge and cleaning it around. That wasn't coming from the outside. Are you sure? Does that, look like has a, that looks like it has a little plug on it. Uh, we are in a situation again where we might be sinking. We, uh, we have a lot of courage. <laughs> Power for a cigarette lighter. Are you We've got another uh, pump I turned off the okay. switches. Okay, uh, I think the switches might be off. Let's see. There we go. There we go. No, but is there one to like plug yeah. it in? Yep. Where at? How's it going? <laughs> it's it's so good, smoke, man. Smoke Ethan, if you had to rate this from one to ten, where are we at right now? I'd say we're like an eleven. Right now. We're an eleven. We're killing it. Is that on the good end? Yeah, oh, amazing. Guys, uh, one thing that we just noticed, Hunter and I, is there's a weird little plug right there. Pull that plug up. See that? It's like a weird little like. Okay. Yeah, pull that up. Water was just flowing out of here. Yeah. They were just picking water from the bottom and flowing it up. Do you notice how the water. I just dropped my phone in the belly of the beast and old hunter here pull it out.
water we to land went water. from the dock to the other side of the lake and we drove all the way up to the top of the lake bro <laughs> this thing is a freaking warrior we legitimately just took a 25,000 pound tank and we drove old. it across two miles worth of really deep gnarly water this thing's 60 70 years old and this tank pulled up on the shores the fact that we just made it across i mean the lake gets to be 100 150 feet deep in the middle there so the fact that we just made it across and we are on dry land now and the bilge pumps are doing their job guys here's what i know god bless the usa Amen, brother. god bless the m548 and to joe at midwest military equipment brother this vehicle has 100 percent passed the test even though we don't know how to get it in the haggy. <laughs> hey, Dave. Hey, guy. Uh, can you walk the viewers through what's going on right now? Right now, I found a really nice picnic spot. We uh, we were across the lake. We said, hey, that looks like a perfect spot to hang out with my bros. So we drove right up to it, turned sideways, perfect angle for pictures. And that leads us to now. <laughs> Here's what we've got. We've got a very limited amount of starter fluid and we have a very limited amount of battery juice. But we're in a situation now where we either have to get the old girl started or we have to leave it and bring batteries and starter fluid. But that's not gonna happen because guess what? We're gonna get her started. So buckle up and enjoy the rest of the show. Um, if you had to describe in just a few words what just happened, what would it be? We're screwed. Really? I mean, we're Did definitely going to be food? late. Heather's going to be mad. We're going to be late. Hunter knows me better than that. Hunter, what's going on? I don't know. I'm still coming off that emotional high we just shared together. We're still calculating. Yeah. Uh, my prognosis is we are flooded. And by flooded, I mean we probably have a little lake water in the fuel. Um, and so we need a little better starting fluid. Also, we might need batteries. Better starting fluid? You mean more starting fluid? Any uh, input? I don't know. Maybe she just needs a little break. She's just sprinting hard across the lake, wants to enjoy the picnic spot. Give her five, ten minutes. Maybe she's up to for another, I like, I like another your, battle. I like your thought process. In the meantime, Hans and I are going to jump on the jet ski and probably try to go find some. Uh, Chick-fil-A number one. Chick-fil-A number one. I don't have the keys. We're also going to try to find the... Uh... Hey, is the cooler in there? Yeah. I need a drink. Too late. Hold off. Let it let it burn off a little bit. One hour later. Hands, as you can see, is pulling us back. What? We're gonna have uh, Davis back the, the truck down to the uh, dock here. Really, I'm not that concerned. Uh, bilge pumps are definitely doing their job. Our biggest issue right now is the engine doesn't want to run because it's running on nothing but uh, water. So as soon as the fuel system pumps the water through. Uh, we'll be good to go, which is really cool guys. Ultimately, it looks like we're, <laughs> we're about to like sink our ship But I'm not that concerned about it because what what kind of ruined uh, the day here Was water in the fuel Which happened from a faulty fuel cap. 
So once that pumps through and we get uh, actual fuel back in the system into the water separator, we'll be able to fire this bad boy up. Okay, cool. What happened? Did you bring any cables? I got a chain and some straps in the back. <laughs> nice. Nice it's just, work. A, it's just a sweet round. Well, we made it to the other side, went to a campground. I think she just got a little tired. Water in the fuel? Yeah. I mean, here's the thing. We knew it was gonna happen. We pushed it and we pushed it and we pushed it and it was doing great. And I wasn't gonna be happy until we left here today knowing what the weak link was and we found the weak link and it was a stupid freaking rubber, rubber O-ring on a gas cap. And ultimately we didn't leak fuel into the lake, we leaked uh, water or lake into the fuel, which is not a big deal. I mean, it sucks for the, for the tank, but ultimately for the environment and everything that we're doing today, we're fine. She needs a good fuel cap though. It was the one thing that we overlooked. The, literally the one thing. Like, yeah, it took on some fuel. Obviously the bilge pumps are, are running, but the Achilles heel happened to be water in the fuel, which is one thing that we just didn't. I mean, we should have, but we didn't think about it. And uh, the water got into the fuel tank and here we are. So uh, not that big of a deal. We're good to go. We're gonna load it up, head home. Send the video to Joe at Midwest Military Equipment, and I think he's gonna be pretty damn happy. This motor's like, oh, give me like 15 gallons of water. I'll just, I'll just chug through that and then give me some fresh so fuel, lovely. even a little bit of fresh fuel, and I'm fine. And just half water, half fuel. I'll I'm fine. I'll that. take it. It's fine. Whatever you can give me, I'll take. Is the fuel cap just bad? Yeah, fuel cap's got probably old brittle cracks. In it. It's like one of those dumb things that we didn't even think about. And honestly, I don't think we thought that the fuel cap would be under water. The chain for the front. So the fact that it was such a dumb little thing, that's a win for me. I mean, all in all, she works. DNR just pulled up. They're happy. Uh, everybody's happy. When DNR pulls up and they're like, nice work. That's when we're like. Because we normally it's like, all right. All right. We got you for seven tickets. <laughs> yeah. No like, permit. Me, they're like, let me get someone's ID. <laughs>
So I just got a phone call from a guy that's about two mile, uh, two hours south of here, and he just called me and said, hey man, I've got my own personal excavator really, <laughs> really stuck. More stuck than you got yours? Dude, it's a 100,000 pound machine. Our machine was 50,000 pounds. It's He's, a hundred and what? 100,000 pound machine. John Deere 450 CL or something. Giant excavator. Uh, they everybody told him like, hey dude, don't do it, don't do it, don't cross that section of road. He crossed that section of road, and he's buried up to the body of the excavator. And he just called and said, hey, I'll do whatever it takes, man. I got to get this hoe out of here. BLM's on me. Um, you know, my property owner's on me. I got to get this thing out. So, guess what we're doing this week? Another excavator recovery. Another excavator recovery. <laughs> which means. Uh, so just having a conversation with him, we need to grab the D8 dozer, which we used to haul the other D8 dozer out. And we also probably need to take our Sani uh, 155 to help dig. And then we need to take some swamp mats because this bro is buried. And guess how long he's been buried? Any guesses? Six weeks. Two weeks, two months. Two months? Homeboy's been in the mud for two months, but guess what? His host still runs. So guys, the next video that you watch after this one, hopefully the next one, is gonna be us going down to Huntington, Utah and helping this poor dude out because he is in a bad situation. And uh, I think we're gonna be able to get him out between the dozer and the excavator and the swamp mats and some snatch blocks. I got a good feeling about it. 